This is the Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind podcast, where divorce coach Corey Shapiro helps you get creative and not reactive in your divorce. Tune in now to get the support you need to make it through this difficult time. Here's your divorce coach, Corey Shapiro. Welcome to the Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind podcast. This is Corey Shapiro. Today's topic of the podcast is options to start a divorce. Uh, options to start a divorce when you want something amicable. Um, you know, this everyone says this is a divorce month. We did a previous podcast at January is a divorce month. But what makes me think of is how to save relationships, how to save relationships. And when I think about communication and I think of long term relationships, I think of one couple, only one couple. And they are John and Julie Gottman. They're these major researchers. They've been doing it for, I think, over 40 years, and they can predict um, what makes relationships work and not work from a research perspective. And that's why they really speak to me. And after all their research, you can spend a lot of money in their courses, and I recommend you go there if you really want to try to save your marriage. But if you want the short answer, the quick bite, the sound bite, here it is successful uh, people in relationships, successful pairs turn towards each other much more than unsuccessful relationships. So when you make a bid, that's what they call, you say, hey, I just saw this great movie. And if the person ignores you, then they're turning away from you. If they say something like, hey, how was that movie? Or like, I enjoyed that movie. That's turning towards. That's what they're talking about. So successful relationships turn towards each other. Okay, so let's get into our quote. It's from Andrew Carnegie. I am a disciple of this great gentleman because he's made so many people work for him wealthy. That, to me, is the, is the key. Like, you have a great professor, make people smarter. He made people who work for him better, richer. Um, what he wanted... On his tombstone is our quote for today, and you could read this on the web, but he wanted to say, here lies a man who knew how to enlist in his service better men than himself. I mean, to me, what humility, what humility this guy has. He's, he's willing to hire all these smart people, um, and he can be such a great leader get the most out of them, make them be better. And it reminds me of that old quote or old story where you basically have two wolves inside of you. You know, one's angry and one's very light and playful. Which one wins? And of course, the one you feed wins. Um, and just another thing about Andrew Carnegie, he gave away 90% of his wealth. He called it surplus wealth and he wrote about it. Big believer, amazing person. So if you are interested in someone who's just, I think, doing some really good for the country back in the day, check out Andrew Carnegie. Um, and that's in, use Andrew Carnegie, inspire us to use our better selves through me, better coaching, and through all my mentors who make me better. So I don't, you know, not be that wolf who's so angry and wants to fight, but someone who wants to be creative and think things through and move us to a better po post-divorce life. So if you have a question for the podcast, you can submit a question, a voice question at question.gettingdivorced.org. Let's get to the question. It's by Cord. It goes like this. I want a divorce from this toxic marriage. I want to serve my spouse and move on. I hope we can have an amicable divorce. Well, Cord, um, sorry you're in a toxic marriage, not a pleasant place to be. I'm not sure what type of work you guys have done, but let's assume we're moving on. The decision is made. It's final. One thing I will say, Cord, is how you start a divorce action uh, is very relevant to how things are going to proceed. You're sending a message. And if there's no emergency issues, you're just, you know, I'm done with this marriage and you want to move on. If you personally have, have your spouse personally served, 
That's a very aggressive move, very aggressive move. And that might backfire. Um, and I'm not exactly sure the reasoning you, you need that. Generally, you would personally serve in, in a more contested matter. If there's uh, more, if there's more um, distrust, there's more, um, you know, maybe there's an issue of service where you really don't want the person to run away from the jurisdiction. There's a lot of different options. So let me just give you some options about breaking the news, breaking the divorce news, uh, which could be a podcast in itself. But what I've seen in an amicable way is, first of all, you know, if you have children, that could be a whole family therapy thing or couples therapy to figure out the right messaging. And if you guys are volatile in that toxic situation that you are, I would suggest maybe either a couples therapist would be a great way to try to work out a therapeutic way to discuss this. Because if you just bring up to that spouse who doesn't want a marriage, hey, by the way, you know, that I'm going to get divorced. And they're like, Whoa you know, and it's going to just turn into something nasty. I don't know how things are going to go. I'm a little nervous. Things can unravel, but maybe in the confines of a safe space with a, a really skilled professional, maybe those emotions can be worked out. You know, the better wolf can be fed. Uh, all right. The other way to do it is you could go to mediation, but how do you get them to mediation? This is the key. Don't just say, I want a divorce. I mean, already, that's, they're, they're, they're not even listening to you. They're flooded. They're done. But if you say things, and this is sort of where we're going when we're being creative, here's some of the secret sauce. You're saying what they're going to agree with. So you say to your spouse, we both want to be happy. We both want what's best for our kid. We both know things aren't going the way we want them to go. You see, she, they have to be agreeing with me. They have to be agreeing with me. And then when you get that, it's a, easier to get them to mediation. But if you say, hey, you know, I want a divorce and I got this great mediator and let's go tomorrow, they're going to be like, no, they're going to shut down or it's going to be a, a fight. You know, it's fight, flee, freeze. Uh, that's what it's going to be. Um, you could also... If you're like, Corey, this is just too much work. I just can't do this, but I do want to be amicable, but I'm scared things might blow up. I don't want to go to couples therapists. It's going to be just, ugh. Here's what I suggest. Just give a heads up. And then your attorney can send an email, a letter. You know, they don't have to serve. Give someone a couple of weeks to respond. Hey, by the way, you can say everything I just said in an email. And by the way, you should be hearing from my attorney. I picked someone who's very... Uh, practical, very collaborative, and I hope we can have an amicable uh, divorce and to support our family going forward. And then they're not blindsided. They're not blindsided. All right, here's my coaching corner. First chord, I appreciate the emotional needs to move on. Appreciate that. But I focus on long-term. And long-term, really, especially if you have children, is can I go to these life events, graduation events, where the children, your child, wants both parents to be there and is not stressed and feels it's loving and about them. And how you do your divorce, that will be a factor in your child's life going forward to how secure they feel in their parents' relationships. And also it carries down to their romantic relationships. My coaching corner is Yes, it's hard, and I appreciate you wanting to rock and roll and serve, but maybe the better side of your wolf can say, you know what, let me deal practically about this. This is a long-term situation I have to deal with. And also, I would get very practical and maybe go to a financial advisor. You know, having two homes, more expensive than one home, even if you're making a good money, um, and just get very practical. Um, and then deal with these issues, hopefully in mediation or in therapy, so that that other side of that wolf is not taken over and really causing a rampage. All right, so I hope that was helpful, Cord. Let's just give a little preview for next week. It's about modification of child support when job changes. You know, people change job, incomes fluctuate. Is child support just locked in forever like a mortgage? Can I just sell my house if I lose my job? What happens? That's what we're going to get into next week. Um, so I want to thank everyone for listening. I want to thank everyone for doing the hard work that's necessary to 
you know, feed that better side of our wolf to play long term, to be creative and not reactive. It's not easy to do. And it's a daily practice. So let's keep going. I do have faith in you that you can do it. It can be done, but it's not necessarily every day is not going to be easy. Thank you for tuning in to the Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind podcast with divorce coach Corey Shapiro. Divorce can be a difficult and overwhelming process, but it doesn't have to be. Corey's book, Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind, is here to help you gain clarity, composure, and a strategic mindset. Get it now as an ebook on Amazon or an audiobook on Audible and unlock the power of these resources to make more informed decisions and gain better understanding of the process. This podcast offers general information only. It cannot replace legal advice. If you need tailored advice, contact an attorney licensed to practice in your area. Mm-hmm.